welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. My name is Rosemary Orchard and in today's video I'm going to show you an overview of Pixelmator and Pixelmator Photo for iPad. The iPad is my favourite device to edit photos and create images with. Now I should note I'm no great artist nor a great photographer so what I'm doing tends to be on the basic end of things. But there are two great tools that I use all the time to help me with this. Pixelmator and Pixelmator Photo. I know a lot of people aren't familiar with the differences between these two, and they're both great applications. At just $4.99 each, they seem like a great start to get started with photo editing and image editing. But a lot of people aren't sure of the difference, and that's one of the things that I'm going to cover in today's tutorial. Pixelmator and Pixelmator Photo are both apps that you can use to edit images and photos. However, the primary difference is that Pixelmator is an image editor, whereas Pixelmator Photo is a photo editor. Let's start by opening Pixelmator. This is the first time that I'm opening Pixelmator on my iPad. So it's got a quick tutorial to show me what I can do. If I just tap continue, then it shows me that it's got creative tools, it can do image enhancements, and of course I can then go ahead and share. Now down here at the bottom, I have two options. I can view my images and I can create images. Let's start with viewing my images. Now here I'm in the document browser and I can see a list of the Pixelmator images that would be on my iPad. If I just go over to iCloud Drive, I could scroll down and if I look, I don't yet have a Pixelmator folder. So let's just go back into on my iPad and I'm going to tap create image. Pixelmator will need access to my photos so that I can put photos on my canvas. So I'm going to tap OK to allow it. So when I create an image in Pixelmator, I can either start from an existing image here from the photos selection or I can go into presets and start for a variety of presets, including different paper sizes and envelope sizes and more. Or I could even take a picture from the camera. Also, I can go ahead and use a template. And the templates allow me to do things like create a collage of photos or use a frame or even create cards and posters. Plus we have extra options for things like raindrops and the sunbeams effect. I'm going to start by scrolling back up here and tapping on Sunbeams. These templates are all stored on the internet, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll just tap Download here. As you can see, it downloads quite quickly and after a second, it opens up my image. However, as beautiful as this picture is, it's actually not my image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe in from the left side of the image this is something that you can't do with a pointer device just yet. But here I can see all of my layers. And if I want to, I can go ahead and tap the plus here. And I'm going to select a photo. Here I've got a choice of five photos, including this photo I took in the garden this morning. So if I just zoom out, then you can see my whole image here. And I'll just reshow my layers. Now if I go ahead and I tap on this layer here, then I can delete that original image. If I go ahead and tap on my first Sunbeams layer, I need to unlock it, but after I've unlocked it, I can go ahead and hide my layer. And I can repeat this with my other layers as well. These are locked because they're part of the template. So now if I just do this with one last layer, you can see my original image. And what's more, on the left in the layers view, you can see the layers that are visible because they're full size versus the layers that aren't visible because they've been hidden. And to unhide any layer, I just tap on it again and tap show. And I'll repeat that once more with all of my images. So this is how you can use a template to start with. The image definitely looks better with the sunbeams, but it would probably be for the best if the sun was actually coming in from that side. Now, if I go ahead and I tap on my layer here of my image and tap it again. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple-related tutorials from Screencasts Online. 
Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple-related video tutorials. All of our members get access to brand new, up-to-date tutorials each week, as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS-related tutorials. You can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone, and even your Apple TV using the members-only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription to the Digital Screencast Online monthly magazine, published each month and packed with videos, articles, reviews, as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone, and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a Screencast Online member.